to get back to the point of like being uh, Caucasian in a right in hip hop is I've only seen it in a couple comments. No one has ever like not. I rap my ass off, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, and I make good music, and I come around with solid people. Right. I'm not coming in the room unless I was referred or coming with somebody that I know is a mother legend bro mm. so that's my main thing like i learned that very young like if if you with the wrong person and you know they weird i don't care if they're like i mean it, it, you gotta you know weigh the situations but i don't want to be introduced to kanye west by somebody that i think is squirrely mm. you get what i'm saying you want to be introduced by somebody that's a legend that's true because like i've been around kanye this is back in the day before i kind of made it clear that i didn't always care for some of the things he's done, but I was around Kanye and it's like, people are acting like I'm supposed to walk up to him and say, hi, I'm not walking. I'm just saying hi. Now, if I'm with somebody who knows him and wants to say, Hey, this is Adam. You got the best podcast in the whole world. Cool. Yeah. I was, I, that happened with me with Cameron. I'm with Ben Baller. I probably wouldn't have walked over and said, what up to Cameron? If he wasn't with Ben I'm Baller, with Ben yeah. Baller. Ben Baller walks me right up to him <laughs> and says, this is Adam. You got the best podcast, whatever. That was a cool way to meet him. But yeah. it is kind of weird when you feel like a, a in a thirsty environment, especially where it's all fans. Yeah. And you kind of know you're going to get just get lumped in with the fans. And you you don't really want that introduction. You'd, you'd prefer to get Not highlighted, at all. you know? Or I don't even care if the dude's friends. Like everyone has some friends that are like, you know. A little, I'm not talking about business partners and people that be a, p- a part of the business, but everyone has a couple friends that you know are just kind of flaky and like mm. I want to be introduced by the by the man, right? You know where it's automatic love, like and that's what like situation with Thug and and Tip and all these people like that you can't even get around, mm. but because of Shad bringing me there, you get what I'm saying? Because of Desto bringing me there, because of whoever it is that may introduce me, I'm automatically family. No one can say anything about my word not being true or nothing like that. Like, yeah. I'm solid as it gets when you get introduced like that. That is true. And honestly, like, even being being around Thug and Gunna and shit, a lot of that was because of Dub. And, like, when I interviewed Thug, it's because Juice World basically walked up to him and said, hey, it's my boy Adam. You should do an interview with him. Yeah. You know, it's like that cosign. It's everything. Especially if you're yeah. young Thug and it's like, I mean, I don't know how Thug was living his life, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't sit around watching YouTube interviews all day, you know? Like yeah. he's he's the fucking man. He's allowed to like not really pay attention to what's going on in the yeah. hip hop media. So I'm not yeah. necessarily surprised if he doesn't necessarily know yeah, all about. That motherfucker move you know? a million miles an hour and has exactly, a yeah. hundred things to do every day. So yeah. So so how'd you feel when the YSL Rico came down? Man, that's really sad, bro. Because I just know that Gunna and and Thug like they just really 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 good people, bro. Like they're loving people. Like I've seen them put on the whole motherfucking block. Mm. Their whole, everyone around them is on. Everyone on there, everyone around the crew, whether they signed or not, is bust down. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and well taken care of. Mm. Living lifestyles that, you know, otherwise nobody would be living. So if anybody's telling or any of that shit, it's like, it just blows me that, you know. Definitely. Hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully all that shit gets squared away for sure. Um, Okay, but. In terms of, oh yeah, one one last question about being a white rapper. Did you ever say the N word in your prior Never. life? Never. I don't do that. I Respect. don't do that shit. I don't do that shit. It's probably a good way to make it's everybody like you as well. <laughs> it's disrespectful. Right. Straight up, people. A rapper's gonna respect you for knowing your place and knowing who yeah. you are. You know. Yeah. And if you're out here saying the N word as a white guy, it's like I agree with Joe Budden years ago. Right. When he told Yellow Wolf that he is a guest in the culture. Mm. I didn't necessarily like like how it was said in spite. Right. But I agree. Hip hop culture, we know where it comes from. Mm. Period. There's no there's no denying it. There's no nothing like if you are white and you are loved in hip hop culture and more importantly, if you are white and you are loved in black culture, mm. you are blessed and you are a, a guest. You're blessed and a guest. Right. Period. I remember one time Vlad asked me that in an interview. He said, are white people guests in hip hop? And I I didn't really know what to say. And he goes, well, I'll put it like this. It's like, would you walk into somebody's house that you didn't know that well and put your feet up on the on the table? I'm like, no. He's like, why? I'm like, because you're a guest. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't walk you know? up and put your feet on the fucking table, it's, you know, it's if also you're not 100% like, solidified, right? Yeah, no, 100%. It's also 2022, though, and there's rappers in Korea, Japan, South America, Mexico. Mm. Like, hip-hop is so, like, I've seen 
like dope dod is from the netherlands and like all these different rappers and you know so it's 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 expanded past the point of like like that real girl like it's like it's but it is black culture, period. Like that's unarguably like a fact. Like like, like somebody like Jack Harlow is someone who realistically I think could be a gigantic artist and never really interact with like mainstream rap culture if he didn't want to. Yeah. But then I look at him fucking with ESTG and it just immediately makes me regard him a certain way of like, yeah. oh, you're really fucking with like the most yeah. up and coming street artist. And that artist. video is crazy, bro. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. that shit was so tight. Yeah, and I mean, but he's been fucking with him for a long time and he's like, ESTG even told me that they, like, he, Jack had like really looked out for him in some pretty unique yeah. ways. You guys can go check that clip out. But, you know, like that, that, Oh, yeah, think, they're both from Kentucky, if right? You, if you have the, yeah, if you have the option of being a rapper and it, really engaging with the culture and fucking with it and showing that you got love for it versus, like, just basically being like, nah, I'm just this white guy who's going to do my own thing and I don't need y'all, like, you, yeah. should, you should definitely probably... If you want to be loved, you should err on the side of fucking with people, right? You have no choice. Like, that's lame. That's so lame to just come in a, a culture that, that is not yours mm. and not fuck with the people and just be like... Like, hell no, like, you have to fuck with the people. You have to touch the people. Like, first things first, when I left L.A., I couldn't wait to get up out of L.A. as far as, like, because I was doing all these shows, opening for people, Lost Globos all the time, like, all these small venues. Mm -hmm. And when I had the chance to go to Atlanta and New York and all these places, like, like I'm rapping on the street in the projects, in Baisley, in Queens, like, in Brooklyn, in you know what I'm saying? Like Park Place, all these legendary places. Biggie from like First Things First with, with with the boy Five Mics. I'm rapping on the corner. So you weren't scared to just pull up and spit? Absolutely not. Like that was my shit. When I was younger, I was very, very, very much into underground hip hop. Right. Like Tech Nine is one of my favorite artists of all time. Like, I think he's an absolute genius. Like mm. we talked about ICP. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I came up on underground hip hop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I went to Atlanta. And B.O.B. and they just liked like how I rap. They just like like how it's immediate and like how it was like how when I was really into the underground shit, you know. So I remember looking at being 17, looking at Bob like, what kind of belt is that? And he was like, it's a Gucci belt with the double G's. I'm like, like I come from nothing. Like I don't know what the fuck a Gucci belt was, even with the tan, the most obvious Gucci belt in the world. This is also 2015. Or 2014. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, coming from what I come from, I didn't even know what the fuck that was. Right. So, like, um, what I was saying is, uh, yeah, you know, absorbing the culture, like, that was everything to me. Like, I, that was so much everything to me, especially coming from the juggalo culture. It's like, I, all I care about is black culture. Mm. All my friends, well, I have a bunch of white friends too. I have a bunch of Filipino friends and a bunch of Hispanic, Latino friends. But I'm just saying like black culture means everything to me. And if I've never said that, that's, that's from the heart, you know? Right. Like that, like it doesn't get more obvious to me. You Definitely. know what I'm saying? Like I like, I love black music. I love black culture. I love black people. It's, it's absolutely everything to me. For sure. All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.